Oh man, so much to say, just so little time to say it in this video, but what is going on guys, it is your boy HG Jammers here, back with another Ultra Street Fighter 4 commentary. The matches in the background you will be seeing are a couple of endless matches and a couple of ranked matches, but there enough about that, we're not talking about that, you know, the highlight, or shall I say the topic, the main topic, the discussion of this video. We'll be talking about the past weekend. For those of you who do not know what happened this past weekend, you missed out. You were missing out. You are missing out. It was EVO, the biggest fighting game tournament in all of fighting game tournament history. You know, the biggest one happened at the weekend. You know, the weekend of upsets, the weekends of record broken. Um, uh, yeah, the we we could weekend of records broken. Ah, my tongue's twisted. And, you know, it was just all-round hypeness. It was all... I think everybody, even spectators, they felt it feel it you know the players felt it the most but um you know i'm gonna i'm gonna just discuss most of the games i want to leave old street Fighter 4 to last because i think that's going to be the longest thing i discuss about but you know let's get cracking into it first of all i'd like to you know congratulate uh all the players who won their respective games their respective titles so you know uh uh gary rayo yes sounds retarded it's not galileo which the commentators are saying it is gary rayo I have to say that multiple times in this video, it's going to annoy me. But, um, you know, he won Blast Blue, Chrono Phantasma, props to him. Uh, CD Jr. for KI, I tipped him from the start. Props to him, I respect him so much for that game. Um, I'm not sure who won Super Smash Bros. Because I wasn't, I'm not a Smash Bros. fan. Uh, and I don't follow the scene, but you got to respect their fighting game. you got to respect the fighting game, you got to respect their fighting game community. So props to the guy who won that. All I know is that Pikachu blew it up at some point in Top 8, which I'll get onto that. Uh, further, uh, you know, Justin Wong for Ultimate Marvel. He was long overdue. He was one of the players long overdue in Evo for Marvel anyway, and he done it without a top tier team. And you know, last but not least, Luffy, European player in top eight in grand finals, won Evo. I will get onto that later, but you guys know the gist of it. <laughs> but yeah, so let's let's dissect little things uh, for the remaining time I have with this video. So you know, Blaz Blue, you know, um. I've never watched, uh, I have watched Blaz Blue tournaments, but I've never sat through, I've never sat the whole way through a top 8, and I must say, you know, the Evo top 8 for Blaz Blue, it was brilliant. Uh, I, I was rooting for my boy, uh, my European player, uh, Kiba, uh, some of you may know him, some of you may not, he won final round for Blaz Blue Chrono Phantasma, I know him in person, but I haven't seen him in a long time, and uh, I was tipping him from the start, but unfortunately, I think he made uh, 12 plays, but he was... The highest ranking place UK player out of all the UK scene that went to EVO for players, which is shouts to those guys. Uh, I think he got knocked out one or two matches before, I think he got knocked out two matches before the last eight, which is unfortunate. But you know, I think it was nerves and you know, uh, he wasn't confident enough, he just kicked in, it happens to everyone. It happens on the big stage man, it's EVO, so you got to respect that about the players. Um, wherever you go, you can criticise all you want, but you have to remember that's the biggest stage of all fighting game tournaments and it is. You know, I'd probably wet myself, I'd probably poop myself, I don't know, <laughs> it's Evo, man. But, um, yeah, so, you know, the top eight, I love the Japanese players for their Blaz Blue, uh, their Blaz Blue play, you know, and, uh, you know, the grand set, or <laughs> the grand set, the grand finals was even brilliant, it was, it was even better because, you know, it was between Laichi and Azrael, Garareo and Tagura. You got a feel for Tagura, though, because, you know, he was in winners, uh, he was in winners, for, he was in winners bracket, he was in the winners side of things, so, you know, but you have to think of it of, it was his to lose you know it wasn't his to win it was his to lose because you know in the losers bracket Gary Rayo damn it that sounds so retarded but he just wanted it more you could see it in the face and you have to respect the fact that you know when you're passionate about something it will show on your face the emotions will ride high and they will show on your face and it, it, it just showed on Gary Rayo's face so much I mean how are you going to do in both sets right you're gonna be losing like two games to none and then you just bring I think it was either 2-0 2-1 and he brings the set back to reset the bracket and then redo that whole scenario again to win the tournament like come on that doesn't, re um, that doesn't deserve respect I don't know what does but you know Blazboo was great and I did tweet out um, a bit of controversy and a bit of speculation in my tweet because I, I may have misinterpreted it uh, I did say you know it's funny how the top tier characters of their respective games are not winning the tournaments uh, and what I meant by that because other people you know uh, I think everyone got a bit confused and I, the way I uh, tweeted out was what I meant was the characters sitting right at the top of their tier list so you know Blaz Blue it would be um, Blaz Blue would be Kokonoe, uh, KI would be Saber Wolf you know and so on and so forth with the other games they weren't winning 
their tournaments. I mean, Kokonoe didn't even make top 8 for Blaz Blue, you know, and that's what made top 8 for the games this year even more interesting. I mean, I know Lychee and Azrael, were t uh, like, they're high on the list, but they're not, the, like, the ones sitting right at the top. They're not sitting on the throne, which that's what made it so good. But I know there's going to be a spell of Lychee players just hoarding all over Blaz Blue. But, you know, I blame Blaz Blue, but, you know, watching that is refreshing and makes you want to practice the game again. So, you know. I may dive into it, you never know, and you know, props to Gary Rayo because he walked away with a big sum of money and he, go, he gets to go to the uh, Arc System Works Cup, I think it is, later on this year, which is it's brilliant. You know, enough about Blaz Blue, but that was that was a great uh, top 8, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Next on, next we have KI, Killer Instinct. Now, a lot of people don't like watching the game, slow paced, not that fun to watch, not entertaining. I have to agree, but there's only two players I like watching for Killer Instinct and that is the champion, CD Jr. and Rico Suave. I watch their streams every now and then when they when they uh, say that uh, when they say they're streaming Killer Instinct. And you know, I know CD Jr. deserved it more than anybody. If there's anyone gonna be champion to him, because he deserved it more than anybody. He put in so much work for that game, put in so much work at Sidira, and you know it paid off. And you know you got to respect that. And I remember Alex Vai, he must have tweeted out. He must have said. Uh, you're not go you're, you only do well on the East Coast. You're not going to do well on the West Coast because you're afraid to get you're afraid to get whooped. You're afraid to get beaten. And you know, Karma Karma comes back for you guys, and it did come back for Alex Valle because the East Coast player came to the West Coast, Las Vegas, and he won. And he won. He walked away with a large sum of money, and you can see the emotion on his face because you know how you know how much he's been working. I think past six or seven months working on the game like that. Well, you know, I can't wait to see him. In season two, is he gonna drop Sadir and pick up another character? With over there, they've only announced two characters. I think TJ and Maya so far. So I'm curious to see if he'll swap characters or not, or whether he'll stay with Sadir. I think he'll stay with Sadir. And that's another thing. Sadir's not at the top. She's she's a high on uh, high on the list for the tier list for KI, but she's not at the top like Sable. Sable Wolf was in top eight, but that's inevitable. You know, there's gonna be like five or six Sable Wolves in top eight. You can't avoid that. Um, but yeah, congratulations to CD Jr. again. Well deserved. Uh, I, like I said, he deserved it more than anybody. Um, for Super Smash Bros, uh, like I said, I don't follow the scene. you got to respect the game and their community, but as far as I'm aware, all I know, my Twitter blew up when, uh, when a Pikachu blew up someone in Top 8, and then everyone in the crowd was just chanting Pikachu, and then worshipping this guy like he was a god. He probably was, I don't know. <laughs> but then, you know... Uh, with the Smash Bro, you know, the new game, Smash Bros Wii U, uh, they're pulling out all the stops, you know, they're pulling out a new character, like, every single day. And, uh, you know, you kind of wonder why does the Street Fighter do that, or why can't they do that? Why didn't the other fighting games do that, you know, because it's pulling out all the stops. I mean, you know, how are you going to have Captain Falcon? How are you going to have, uh, the Fire Emblem characters, uh, Palantina from Kid Icarus? All them characters, they just come out, like, every day, you just blink, there's a new character. So shout out to Nintendo and the guys making Smash Bros Wii U. Definitely well deserved. I would I would get into that game, but it's it's just not my cup of tea. <laughs> it's just not my cup of tea at the end of the day, but you gotta respect it. And you know, the intermission that happened, uh, you know, the so on so called leak of Tekken 7. Uh, I gotta feel sorry for Harada, but at the same time, I I've got mad respect for that guy because uh, you know, I don't know I don't know who leaked it, but you know it they kind of disheartened a lot of people. Obviously, people are still hype for Tekken, but I think a lot of people were expecting uh, Tekken X Street Fighter at the end of the day. And you know, whoever leaked the information first, you just disheartened a lot of fans. Does they want a Tekken X Street Fighter, or oh, they're anticipating it? Now, you know, I don't know if Harada told people to you know release at a certain time of the day on Evo's uh, Evo Finals Day, or he said wait until after I've announced it. But you know, some people are just impatient and want their money, their YouTube money, their max CPM, baby. No, I'm kidding, but you know, props to this guy because he didn't have any footage or enough footage or the actual trailer that he um, initially in wanted to show people, so you know, he went up to his room real quick in Las Vegas in the hotel and he whipped up something real quick and I was like, wow, props to this guy, if, uh, you know, every game director or game producer to follow his footsteps, you know, you have to have whatever footage you can find, just whip something together, show the crowd, they're going to get hype anyway, but you know, looking forward to Tekken, uh, Tekken 7. Not much of 3D fighter, not much of a fan of 3D fighters, but I still play them every now and then, so looking forward to that. And you know, onto the next thing, Marvel, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. As much as I don't like playing the game, as much as bro, uh, you know, as as broken as it is, it can still be hyped in some favors. And like I said at the, uh, early in the commentary, 
there have been a lot of overdue or long overdue players who deserve the EVO Championship and Justin Wong was one of them and thankfully you know he used his team as old classic Marvel versus Capcom 2 team and knocked out all the favorites uh, you know didn't let a top tier win you know all that kind of stuff all the emotions were riding high and I think he did the, I, I missed the barrel roll he done on the stage apparently so someone's gonna have to link me a video or something so I can see that I hope someone's made a gif of it or something I need to see that stuff Justin wanted to be framed <laughs> but you know he was trending on Twitter as well is that hype Evo is trending on Twitter Justin Wong was trending on Twitter it was crazy you know and you gotta respect that you know that's another thing that happened uh, you know there were top tiers in Marvel in the top 8 but you know uh, Virgil Doctor Doom didn't win it so oh, nor did Zero I felt, uh, who, who was in top 8, uh, there was CTR, there's Control Flux, there was Filipino Champ, Chris G, uh, Bifu Techie Insane, Coach Steve, uh, who else was there, Mon, Mon didn't play well because he was sick, I don't know, that, that was it, Mon didn't play well because he was sick, but you know, shout out to the top 8 guys for um, Marvel Evo, and you know Justin Wong, like I said, it was long overdue a tournament. Yeah. Um... Now, you know, last but not least, hopefully I can squeeze this in, uh, EVO Street Fighter 4, old Street Fighter 4. Now, the first thing I want to say is, uh, EU, European players are not free. I know there has been some uh, speculation in terms of international level that European players cannot step up to the plate. Well, I'm sorry guys, they just did, or he just did, the representative for EU just did. So shout outs to Luffy for winning old Street Fighter 4, you know. He was the first European player to make top 8. He was the first European player to win EVO. And he, he, he was the first player to win Street Fighter 4 with a female character. And, you know, the funny thing is, there was a poll ages ago saying, who do you think will make top 8? And funny enough, the Event Hub readers, the Event Hub readers are always the funniest out of all the readers I see, they said an EU player wouldn't make top 8. Oh my god, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this PG. Not so, not try to swear because I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm so happy for Luffy, you know, represent the EU, and he, you know he just took it, he took the ball by the horns and he won it. That's what he done, and you gotta respect. It. And now you know, apparently Rose has become an issue now because now that she's won Evo, her meter game should be nerfed. Uh, she shouldn't be allowed to have two ultras in one round. I mean, guys, this has been happening for like two or three years with Rose, so why has it become an issue now? I mean, Luffy said it in an interview earlier in the year, he said, uh, aside from the damage buff she has, Rose is still the same, so he pretty much won with the same character, except an increase in damage. I mean, when Rose goes up against a fireball character, she's chilling. She's gonna have two bars of meat in the first 10 seconds. Like, think about it, come on, man. But cra it's, it was crazy. It's like, and you know, the top eight players, um, Sako, Everyone hypes him up and then he just flops on the big stage. I, I got a fear for Saka. I would say do not big me up, please don't, because I might just flop. Ricky Ortiz, he played very well, but you know, he met his end. Snake Eyes, whoa, Snake Eyes. Respect the patience. Respect Snake Eyes' patience. Respect his game for Zangief. The amount of, the, the amount of matchups, he just has to sit there and wait. It's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. But that's another thing that brings me on, right? Everyone moaned about Cross Tekken having timeouts, yet there were six timeouts in top eight. Come on, guys. I, I, I think we can draw a line here about timeouts, because you can't complain about if Cross Tekken, if Cross Tekken has timeouts and other fighting games have timeouts, I don't see how it's okay for other fighting games and not Cross Tekken, but I'll, I'll speak about that another time. Who else was there? Uh, you know, there was Bonchan, there was Fudo, and there was Gat. Well, I, I think uh, Luffy's very good at taking out... Uh, He's very good. He's very good at taking out uh, Fei Long players all the way through. So I respect that. He was he was hungry more than anybody else. I think Fudo could have played a lot better, but <laughs> big stage. He hasn't won either since 2011. So you know, Tournament knows why I kicked him. And I think it was Bonchan and it was Luffy's first e uh, Evo final as well. So it was it was bon like I said with uh, you know Dagura and Blaz Blue. It was Bonchan's to lose, and you got to feel it for him because he, he is a very solid player, but. I just think he just—I think he just cracked on the big stage, and Luffy was just way hungry. And the thing that differentiates uh, Bonchan from Reinhardt is there were some places where Reinhardt would have uppercut with Sagat that Bonchan didn't, and he, he just wasn't feeling—he didn't want to risk it, which I can respect. I totally respect that. But sometimes you just got uppercut. I mean, I'm a guy who loves his uppercuts. I love my DPS, right? But you know, there's sometimes you—you just got to uppercut. <laughs> 
But, um, you know, hopefully Bonchan... Like, it'll take a long time to recover from this, but hopefully Bonchan can recover from this and come back stronger. You know, Luffy's going to be the EVO champion for the next year. Hopefully he can defend his title. Obviously, if he gets beaten in other tournaments, there's other tournaments, but, you know, he's gonna, his main focus is going to be uh, picking up Rose or sticking solid with Rose, trying to defend his title next year. Hopefully he can, because... You have to remember, right? Everyone who hates on Luffy and Rose now, you have to remember the names he took out before he got there. He took out Ata, he took out Margo, he took out Tokido, Misei, the Japanese Makoto player, Sony Ono, the famous Wookiee player in America. He took out a bunch of names, so it wasn't easy. It's like, he had, he had the death bracket, and some people want to hate on Rose now? Nah. Props to Luffy. Luffy, if you ever watched this, shout out to you. Well deserved. You know, Rose is the greatest character. She's not top tier. You know what's brilliant about top 8 uh, Street Fighter 4? There was no Yun. There was no Vortex. Let that sink in for a moment, people. There was no Yun. There was no Vortex characters. That is why I felt top 8 for old Street Fighter 4 was brilliant this year. Some people didn't find it entertaining, but I did. No Vortex characters. Just let that sink in. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm too hyped for this game. But, um... Yeah, video's wrapping up here, guys. Obviously, there's so much I wanted to say, like Dagger being knocked out, uh, you know, Infiltration being knocked out, but I'm sure you guys can speculate that in the comments yourself. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this content. It has been hype. Sorry if I deafened your ears, but this is what I do for a living. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, this is what I do for fun. Um, so, later on in the week, I will be having videos uploaded. I will have an uh, Old Street Fighter 4 set, Endless Battle set uploaded, uh, probably one or two tech videos uploaded as well, and there will be Ratchet and Clank videos as well uploaded if you are interested in that, so be sure to check that out. Let me know in the comment section, guys, how you found EVO, how you felt about it, was it hype enough for you, was it not? Just let me know, guys, the comment section's there for a reason. This has been your boy, HD Jammers, and I will see you guys on the next Old Street Fighter 4 commentary, so enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out, YouTube.